This is Twit. Uh, I am excited, though, to kick things off with a conversation with a guy who knows a whole lot <laughs> about Apple. It's Mark German of Bloomberg. Welcome back to the show, Mark. Thanks for having me. Yeah, pleasure to have you on. So uh, you actually uh, pu published a piece that had me pretty, pretty excited because I uh, certainly spent many years writing about the smart home and uh, particularly Apple's dalliance into the smart home with HomeKit. And you just released a piece talking about Apple working on something called a Home Hub. Let's Let's hear about that. It's interesting. So they launched HomeKit actually about 10 and a half years ago, back in uh, 2014, as part of iOS 18. And then a year later, they released the Home app as part of iOS 19. And the idea was to make it so you can use your iPhone to control your home appliances, whether that's things like locks, lights, sprinklers. I mean, you know it well, you've written about it for years. But they never really had a coherent strategy for first party devices in the home. They've had the Apple TV which is fine. They've had the home pods, which have mostly been duds compared to the other speakers in the market. But now they want to release a, a device for people who are all in on HomeKit, right? Now there's an ecosystem of third-party devices. Now there's matter. It's built up over the last, you know, nine or 10 years or so, right? So now they believe, you know, despite being super late, it's time, right? Mm -hmm. How can you get more people to buy HomeKit devices? Well, by having a home hub. Now, the interesting thing is that it's not terribly different from an iPad. There's people who pin iPads onto the wall now with a uh, the home app, right? They set that as the default app. But now they've they've created an operating system and a user interface built entirely around the home app, right? You still will have the home app, but you'll have a customizable home screen built around widgets, built around pinning different home controls. So they're all in on this is being as this being a device for Apple intelligence and HomeKit Pro users. Now, can we talk a little bit about the Apple intelligence aspect of it? Because this has long been the promise, right, of the smart home, that the smart home was going to be truly smart. And in particularly from the sort of builder's perspective, we have seen that be the case where uh, you have a home that you walk in the door and lights turn on and you move to the next room and those lights turn off. But from the consumer side of things, it's still a really complicated process where you have to set up a lot of it yourself. And companies have tried to provide that middle ground of a, uh, you know, something in the room in the house that's making assumptions. Is Apple intelligence going to serve as that sort of assumption engine that's going to help actually make the smart home a little smarter? At least initially, I don't think it's going to be a computerized brain using the dream of, of AI to make decisions on on your behalf. I think the AI play there uh, is this upgraded version of Siri that's launching in the coming months uh, with a revamped version of App Intense. Right now, Siri is good at if you ask for a, a single control, right? Something like turn on the lights, turn off the lights, play the song, uh, stop playing music, turn off my alarm but it's not good at finite control of the user interface or the operating system or handling multiple controls at once, right? And so App Intense is gonna allow you to navigate the user interface with your voice. Of course, it's going to be a touchscreen, uh, but now you'll have finite control of the different applications across that system uh, using this revamped version of Apple Intelligence. So I don't think this is going to be particularly sci-fi, but I think this is going to be interesting for people who want a standard singular place to control their home appliances, right? You have a decade's mm. worth of HomeKit devices out there now. Uh, you have more people using uh, these AI services. You have more people using these Apple applications. So it makes sense to have a centralized hub for this. But again, this is a company that is soul searching for new ideas. And this is not a new idea. This is a Appleized version of the Nest Hub, uh, an Appleized version of the Amazon Echo Show and the Echo Hub. Uh, with a little bit of an Apple flavor, Apple ecosystem, Apple price point. So it's another product to, to really sustain that fort, right? To better harden that Apple ecosystem to make it more difficult to leave. But I don't really think this is anything particularly innovative or groundbreaking. Okay, that, that's interesting. I mean, when we, when you, from, from what you understand about it, are we looking at a, is this a, its own, oh, so let me, let me rewind a little bit. You look at the different devices that Apple has released, and depending on the device, 
is it an iPad? It runs iPad OS. Is it an iPhone, iPhone or iOS, excuse me, if it's a TV, TV OS, is this a version of TV OS that this device is going to run? Is this a whole new take on things where it's separate from vision OS? It's separate from watch OS. And, you know, you might see future products down this line, or is this just a kind of strange supplement to what exists already? And maybe Apple's first foray into making its own home kit product. This is a new operating system. Uh, it's a fork of tvOS from a user interface standpoint. It's essentially a blend of watchOS uh, and the standby mode on iOS that they introduced uh, last year right, as part of iOS 17. Uh, my belief is that this is going to be a new OS called HomeOS that's going to replace tvOS and run across uh, the Apple TV, run across HomePods, run across devices like this. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. And when when we think about this device, right, uh, you talk about it kind of being this wall tablet. Is is that the extent of it? Like, from, from what you understand, is this a device that sticks to the wall and stays there? Is this something where somebody can use it as a tablet? Or is it really supposed to be this kind of on-wall home control? And in that sense, I'm curious... Can you compare it to any other Apple product that Apple has made? Um, it, like going into the sort of install level that's required with something that you put on the wall, it just feels a little bit different from what the company has made thus far in that sense. So there'll be a magnetic wall attachment, and then they're also going to have speaker bases that basically looks like a HomePod mini cut in half and slightly tilted. Uh, you're going to be able to, it's like the base is similar to the base of the old iMac G3s or G4s from way back in the day, right? Mm -hmm. Where the disc slot pops up, but obviously this one have a disc slot. So the idea is you may have magnetic wall mounts in multiple places in your home, and you may have these bases in multiple places in your home, uh, and you would basically move it from the wall to the base or carry it around. And so you would use it in these different uh, parts of your day in different places in your home. Uh, you may want to have several of them. You may want to have one that you're moving between the different magnetic attachments on the walls and the magnetic bases. Um, it's going to have a rechargeable battery. I'm not sure how you would charge it uh, on the wall, right? Maybe there's like an ultra low power mode where you can keep it on the wall for several days, but you'll need to put it on that base uh, to charge it properly. Understood. Uh, then I guess um, one other question I have is regarding um, how it... Well, now, now I've, I've forgotten my train of thought. Um, this this device, again, uh, being this kind of on-wall device that is going to work to control the smart home. Oh, it, you have talked before about robotics and Apple. Uh, and uh, yes. I was curious, is this the f That's is a this very good first point. glimpse? <laughs> sort of. Okay, so there's two devices uh, in development. This is the first one, right? This is sort of a test bed to see if people are interested in this technology. And then they're already working on a follow-up version. They've actually been working on the follow-up version for far longer than the initial version, right? So this is just a stepping stone to the main, I would say, the main event, right? The main entree. Uh, the follow-up version, the device is very similar. It has very similar capabilities, but it's even next level on AI. The idea is this device turning into a computerized companion in your workspace, in your home. So an AI companion that helps you get stuff done throughout your day can do tasks on your behalf. And that version has that higher level of AI, improved speakers, probably a higher quality, bigger display. This is something closer to $1,000 probably. Uh, but the main thing is that it's going to have a robotic limb. And so it can move around in your environment while being stationary on the table uh, to follow you around, to point towards you, to like look at certain people. Uh, it can tilt and move uh, as necessary for maybe security functions if you're trying to take a view of, of what's going on in your home from re uh, remote places. Uh, but also on a FaceTime call, like it can mimic the head movements of a person on the other end of a call. So if I'm nodding my head, the uh, device would nod. Uh, if you have one on your desk. Mm -hmm. So that's actually, uh, that, that's the more exciting product, I would say. Absolutely. The last thing I'll ask you is we did see a rumor from uh, Ming-Chi Kuo about Apple making a camera, uh, a, a, a an IP camera for HomeKit. Um, do you think that this home hub is a hint at apple potentially creating more of its own home kit enabled products uh later on down the line 
I believe that they want to wait and see the demand for this product and see if people are demanding first party uh, appliances in the home kit realm from Apple. Uh, mm-hmm. They've been working on a privacy centric camera that doubles as a baby monitor. They've been working on that for some time. Uh, they have not made a final decision on whether or not to release that as they have with this display. And depending on how this display goes, I would anticipate them releasing the camera uh, based on if there's success there. And then over time, you can see them getting into even more types of appliances, things like lights, things like locks, and really owning more of that experience, offering a first party ecosystem of smart home accessories, but also a third party ecosystem of home kit accessories. Absolutely. Well, Mark, I want to thank you so much for taking some time to join us today. It's my pleasure. Uh, yeah, it's been great to have you. Real quick, uh, for the people who want to keep up with what you're doing, how do they get uh, get a hold of your newsletter? Yeah, so you can find me on X, Threads, Blue Sky, uh, Mastodon, you name it, uh, at Mark Ehrman. So please follow me there and Bloomberg.com slash power on subscribe to the newsletter. Awesome. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thanks, Micah. Really. Thanks again. 